Good morning. This is morning prayer for Thursday, September 19th from St. John's Anglican Church in Southampton, Pennsylvania. I'm Father Jay. I am Elizabeth. Thanks for joining us. I am back from my temporary assignment. Thanks to Elizabeth for holding down the fort the last couple of days. Uh, we do have a saintly commemoration today. Theodore of Tarsus. Uh, he actually had two older brothers, Alvin of Tarsus and oh Simon of Tarsus. Wow, you are just super dating yourself. With I this. am. I am old. Um, All right, I've never heard of this guy. Neither had I. Okay. Theodore of Tarsus was born, you know, in the same little um, place that Paul was, and uh, made his way to Rome and was made a bishop and was assigned by the Pope to be the Archbishop of Canterbury. And so most, well, not that's not true, most, many archbishops of Canterbury are uh, commemorated in the Anglican Church. And he was not, you know, um, a renewer of society or, um, or anything, but he did faithfully serve. Um, he did a couple things. He brokered a peace um, between the, uh, the Mercians and the Northumbrians or something. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, and sure of that, are you? Uh, between the somebodies and the somebody else's. Okay, yeah. And, uh, and he established a school in Canterbury, he and another priest, um, which, which instantly became very popular. They taught the Bible, but they also taught poetry and astronomy, and it was, um, it was really one of the first schools of its time in that area. Good for them. Yep. So, you know, three cheers for to celebrate someone who wasn't a, a murder right or a renewer of society just yep. ordinary roll up your sleeves kind of working day yeah. archbishop of canterbury yeah just getting it done getting it done oh send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling let us humbly confess our sins to almighty god almighty and most merciful father We We have have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Venite. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. O come, come, let let us sing sing unto the the Lord. Lord. Let Let us heartily heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. salvation. Let Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. We will do Psalm 50. We'll do it responsibly by whole verse. The Lord, even the mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Out of Zion, perfect in her beauty, has God shone forth in glory. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. There shall go before him a consuming fire, and a mighty tempest shall be stirred up round about him. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth beneath that he may judge his people. Gather my faithful people together, gather my faithful together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. 
and the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I myself will testify against you, O Israel, for Mm. I am God, even your God. I will not rebuke you because of your sacrifices or for your burnt offerings, because they are always before me. I will take no bull calf out of your house, nor he goat out of your folds. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, and so are the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air, and the wild beasts of the fields are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is therein. Do you think that I will eat the flesh of bulls and drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and pay your vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in time of trouble, so I will hear you, and you shall praise me. But to the ungodly, God says, Mm. Why do you recite my laws? And take my covenant in your mouth. Though you hate to be disciplined and have cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you agreed with him and you have taken part with adulterers. You have let your mouth speak wickedness and with your tongue you have set forth deceit. You sat and spoke against your brother, yes, and have slandered your own mother's son. These things you have done and I held my tongue. And you thought wickedly that I am one such as yourself. Wow. Right. But I will reprove you and set before you the things that you have done. Oh, consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. And to him who orders his way aright will I show the salvation of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. I want to point out one thing here that reminded me of last Sunday's sermon, if you attend St. John Southampton. It was on first, first Corinthians chapter 5. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Here we go. So, sometimes in the Psalms, When the psalmist talks about the ungodly, he's referring to the nations, those around Israel who are hostile toward Israel. But more often than not, and this is something that's that's easy to miss, usually when they're talking about the nations, they'll say the nations. When they talk about the ungodly or the wicked, they're almost always, not always, but almost always, talking about people within the covenant family of God who are not following the covenant of God. And so... What he says here is to the ungodly, God says, why do you recite my laws and take my covenant in your mouth? He would not say this about the Amorites or the Amalekites or the Jebusites. A non-believer. Exactly. Right. He would say this about somebody who is within the household of faith, who is acting as though they aren't. And God, more often than not, um, will show his strongest condemnation to those who are receiving all the benefits of the covenant. Mm-hmm. know what the, the law is, know what the promises of God are, but refuse, refuse to, to act as if they know those things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shall I read this or are you? Yeah, go for it. All right. Oh, I commented while you weren't here. Um, when we did the Solomon's Prayer of Dedication, mm-hmm. he um, has a really specific thing that he says, um, let, let foreigners come here and pray here, yep. and when they do, I hope that you, you, you will hear their prayer and mm-hmm. answer their prayer. And I love this because here we are like a chapter and a half later, and we have Solomon's prayer answered in a very specific way. Mm-hmm. This is a fulfillment of his prayer. Now, when the Queen of Sheba, which is in Africa, I believe. Yeah, Ethiopia, I Ethiopia, think. Yeah. Although some people believe that it is on the southern tip of Saudi Arabia. Oh. That it actually isn't Africa at all. That it's a land that uh, is also known in Arabic as Saba. Okay. Well, anyway, she traveled a long way. Long way. Yeah. When the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of Yahweh... She came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, 
she told him all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of Yahweh, there was no more breath in her. That's a great phrase. And she said to the king, the report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report that I heard. Happy are your men. Happy are your servants who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be Yahweh, your God, who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because Yahweh loved Israel forever, he has made you king that you may execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold and a very great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again came such an abundance of spices as these that the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir a very great amount of almug wood and precious stones. Uh, I think that is a, a wood, almug wood is a, a kind of wood that is infused with resin. It would have been made, uh, it would have been sourced, a good source of, of like incense, I think. Hmm. I had to look well, it up and I no, saw... No, actually the context suggests something different though. I had to look it up and it is a very fine, fine grained wood with a black appearance, but it can be polished to a bright garnet or ruby, and it is very highly sought after. Dude! Yeah. That sounds, can we get some of that for our house? Right, for real. That's really cool. All right, anyway, so listen to him, don't listen to me. Uh, verse 12. And the king made of the almug wood supports for the house of Yahweh and for the king's house, and also lyres and harps for the singers, no such almagwood has come or been seen to this day. And King Solomon gave to the Queen of Sheba all that she desired, whatever she asked besides what was given her by the bounty of King Solomon. So she turned and went back to her own land with her servants. Now the weight of the gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold that, are, are you going to freak out about this? It's about 25 tons. It's a lot. No. According to one of the other translations, there's another translation I like to read that updates all of the yeah, um, yeah. all of the old Hebrew measurements to something that would mean something to us today. Right. And I, I mean, I didn't confirm this, but it said 25 tons. Dude. Right. Okay. 25 tons of gold. Verse 15, besides that, besides that which came from the explorers and from the business of the merchants and from all the kings of the West and from the governors of the land, King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went into each shield and he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three minas of gold went into each shield and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. The king also made a great ivory throne and overlaid it with the finest gold. The throne had six steps and the throne had a round top and on each side of the seat were armrests and two lions standing beside the armrests while 12 lions stood there, one on each end of a step on the stick, six steps. The like of it was never made in any kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. Silver was not considered as anything in the days of Solomon. 
For the king had a fleet of ships of Tarshish at sea with the fleet of Hiram. Once every three years, the fleet of ships of Tarshish used to come bringing gold, silver, which is worth nothing, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Mm -hmm. Like you do. Thus Solomon excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. And the whole earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put into his mind. Every one of them brought his present, articles of silver and gold, garments, myrrh, spices, horses, and mules, so much year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities with the king in Jerusalem. And the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stone, and he made cedar as plentiful as the sycamore of Shephelah. And Solomon's import of horses was from Egypt and Kew, and the king's traders received them from Kew at a price. A chariot could be imported from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150, and so through the king's traders, they were exported to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's dizzying. Yeah. Well, and it's also cool because Solomon used not just his military might, but he used his wisdom. Not only was he increasing his, his land by means of treaties, um, and by means of, of, gifts. of gifts that people were giving to him. But he also was a pretty savvy merchant. I mean, this last thing, he was an arms trader. He was buying chariots and horses from Egypt um, for some amount of money and then reselling them to the Hittites and the kings of Syria for more money. And so it was, um, he was expanding his kingdom in all kinds of different ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Did I say it? You didn't. Okay. But you have now. I've said it now. I will sing to the Lord, for, for he, he is lofty and uplifted. The, the horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The, the Lord is my strength and my refuge. The, the Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The, the finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They, they sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. You brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You doing all right there? Sorry about that. All right, we are continuing in Hebrews chapter 9, starting in verse 15. Therefore he, Jesus, is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, mm -hmm. since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Fair point. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law has been declared by God, but it has been declared by Moses to all the people. He took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, 
he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Thus, it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Mm. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Amen. And just as it was appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment, so Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not, not to, to deal, deal with, with sin, sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Oh, it's such a good book. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to, to his, his people. people on, on oh, I was, I, was, I was saying the title. Gloria in excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, you raised up your faithful servant Theodore of Tarsus to be bishop and pastor in your church and to feed your flock. Give abundantly to all pastors the gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may minister in your household as true servants of Christ and stewards of your divine mysteries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will now take a pause uh, while you can lift up your own prayers, whatever you want to bring to God. Let's say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks very much for joining us, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.